Mike, you, what, when did you go to Vegas? What year was it? You won? Actually, I went to Vegas in the late 70s. Danny and Chip, they were the bachelors, the multimillionaires in Vegas now at this time. And Danny was always calling, you got to come to Vegas, you got to come to Vegas. I was living in North Carolina. So finally in 1977, I go to Las Vegas for the very first time. And I'm staying at Danny and Chip's house. I took my entire net worth with me, which was $2,500 at the time. And so I go to Las Vegas, I'm all excited. I'm saying this is the most lavish bachelor pad you ever saw. Pool tables, they had 500 movies stacked up. Nobody had home movies at that time. And a big wide screen they had naked girls running around. It was, a, it was a dream come true, I was in this place, you know. And I was so excited, and I said, Danny, I said, what's on tap for tomorrow? What's on the schedule for tomorrow? And he said, well, he said, I got a big golf match. I'm playing a $20,000 Nassau golf match, where you bet 20,000 the front nine, the back nine, the total with one automatic press, so you could lose 100,000 in a day. Now, Danny was a phenomenal golfer. I caddied for him when he won the City of Dayton State Championship in Ohio. He was the number one man in, on a high school golf team that won the state championship, got a golf scholarship. He could play. And I said, well, who are you playing tomorrow? He said, I'm playing a guy that weighs 400 pounds. I said, you're playing a guy that weighs 400 pounds. I said, what are you spotting him? He said, a half a shot aside. I said, a half a shot aside? I said, there's nobody in the world that weighs 400 pounds that can beat you with just a half a shot aside. And he laughed. He said, it's gonna be a pretty tough game. He said, you can have a piece of it if you want. I said, yes, I want to bet a $500 Nassau. I put my whole bankroll on the line for the golf match the next day. So the next day we drive out to Las Vegas Country Club and naturally the guy he was playing was Doyle Brunson who literally weighed over 400 pounds at the time and I couldn't believe how big Doyle was and they're practice on the putting green all this and the match is lined up we go to the first tee and Danny tees off first and he drives it perfect down the middle of the fairway and I, I said I've died and gone to heaven I can't believe this Doyle gets up and hits a low line drive it goes about as high as this tabletop and there's a hill you know in Las Vegas and he drove it over the hill, low line drive, and we drive out, and now I can see one ball is about 50 yards in front of the other one. And I said to myself, if that's Doyle's ball out in front, I'm screwed here. <laughs> and sure enough, it was Doyle's ball out in front from the back tees of Las Vegas Country Club that day, my first day in Las Vegas ever, Doyle Brunson shot 72, even par from the back tees. He beat Danny out of four bets. I lost $2,000 of my money. I hated Doyle that day. No, you have no idea how bad I hated him. But we became very good friends because during the round, I lived in North Carolina. He was a big running Rebel basketball fan at that time, and I was talking North Carolina basketball to him and ACC basketball. But Doyle and I became very close over the years. But my very first day in Las Vegas, I met Doyle Brunson, who was the reigning world champion of poker at the time, I might add. A few months later, he won his second world title, you know, in back-to-back -back years, 76 and 77, Doyle won back-to-back -back titles. But uh, that's how I got introduced to the tall poppy, Doyle Brunson. He broke me my first day.